Is it weird to have a mug of coffee in a video that's like only this full at the start of the video? Also, you should know this is very cold. I take way too long drinking hot drinks. Yep, a little weird, but still gonna do it because I still like it. Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So The Fortune Men. This is the 11th book that I am doing a review on, which is crazy. I'm very proud of myself for being more on top of the reviews this year. Still not as on top of it as I wanted to be, but you know. Uh, and also we know at this point that this book has made it onto the shortlist and could possibly win the Booker Prize this year. So this story follows Mahmoud Matan, who was accused of murdering somebody in the 1950s. This is a real event that happened, so you can, know how the story ends and I knew how the story ends going into the book if you know about the historical event. I'm not going to say what historically happens because I do want to give you the opportunity to read it without knowing in case you don't already know. So I'm not, it feels weird to say I'm not going to spoil it because I guess technically that's true but also like it's a historical event and it's weird to be like I'm not going to spoil what happened in 1950 like it actually happened but I'm not going to talk about that portion of it. I am going to talk about, of course, Mahmoud being accused of this murder and needing to go through like this justice system uh, in Cardiff Bay, where he lived. This book was written by Nadifa Muhammad, who her father actually knew Mahmoud. So she kind of got sucked into the idea of telling this story, especially since it's cropped up. Um, and was revisited uh, later in the 90s. And since Mahmoud's story followed so closely to Mohammed's dad's story, in that they were both Somali, they both would uh, become immigrants. And while they were very different people, it was enough to get Muhammad interested in this story uh, that she has been on and off you know, thinking about writing for like 17 years, I think it was. As a reader, when you're going through and reading Mahmoud's story, you're kind of trying to figure out who he is as a person. And I was watching an interview with Muhammad where she's talking about um, this idea of like a good immigrant story. And Mahmoud doesn't really fall into that. In fact, he didn't even have like that bad of an upbringing and he still has his mother who is trying to find him she doesn't know where he is and he's not like this idea of an immigrant who moves to a new place who um you know works really hard who sends money home and is you know every day striving and striving that we kind of come to expect out of stories about immigrants and it wasn't until I was watching the interview that I realized how much I do have that expectation when reading immigrant stories, which is terrible because nobody should have to work that hard to fulfill this stereotypical story of who they're allowed to be without moving any further past that. And like, that's where, you know, the ceiling is for the type of person they can be like, that's that's terrible. And it wasn't until like, reading this book, watching that interview that I started realizing that I had that myself, that I had those expectations. But not only that, there's like this need to almost put him into a specific narrative where he doesn't really have one. Mahmoud's changed a lot as a person throughout his time in Cardiff Bay. When he first got to the area, he was working hard. He was uh, really striving. He married a white woman, Laura, and they had a family and everything, but things start to go wrong. Laura leaves him and he gets into gambling. He uh, becomes a petty thief. And while he doesn't do anything that's terrible, the perception is definitely different. And you almost dislike him as a main character, despite knowing that his story is largely about him being accused of murdering somebody and he's going to have to go through this system that is inherently prejudiced against him. And you almost want him to be this like model citizen so that you can feel better about rooting for him in this case. But of course him committing, you know, petty crimes, him stealing items here and there does not warrant him being accused for a murder he didn't commit, let alone the possibility of him being convicted of that murder. And while reading this, I was very much reminded of when George Floyd was killed. And 
people afterwards were digging into the kind of person that he was and pointing to small crimes that he committed and saying, well, see, it's not so bad. But that's absolutely insane, like for so many different reasons. One, the cop didn't know that. The cop that killed him didn't know that. Uh, two, it shouldn't matter anyways. Like, And three, the situation is entirely separate from anything George Floyd has done in the past. All he was doing that night was living his life. It's insane to me that people could look into that and then think that it's justified that this man was murdered in such a public way, in such a terrible way. Like, that's absolutely awful. And while reading this story, I was so much reminded of that and how crazy it is that things that are similar can still happen, that it's easier to convict Mahmoud because he had stolen a few things in his life, because he gambles. Like, if that's the case, if that's all it takes, there are tons of people in the world that could be convicted of murder. But it's not just that, is it? It's also because of the color of his skin. It's also because of where he came from. And it's possibly also because he married a white woman. And that's seen as being almost invasive, especially at the time. An immigrant comes over of different skin color and marries one of their own, uh, a Welsh woman in the town. There's all these things that shouldn't be used against Mahmoud by the police by the town, but are. And it's awful because you see Mahmoud get slowly dehumanized through the story, through going through this process, being in jail, and he no longer has any agency over himself, but you can see him clinging to it. He's so stubborn throughout it, sometimes to the detriment of his case, because he really believes that he's just going to be let out, that this can't end in a, in a conviction. And it's really tough to read through him slowly getting broken down by this system and still really trying to hang on to any bit of himself that he can, whereas he's become this like display thing for the town, for the police, something that the police can shuffle around into whichever situation that they want and he just has to go along with it because they think that there's a very slight possibility and the evidence is so weak but they think that there's a very slight possibility that he might have killed somebody. Now, I haven't really talked about the different perspectives of the book. For me, Mahmoud's perspective was just so powerful in itself that I didn't really want to be looking at the story from any other perspective, if I'm being entirely honest. So we did also get the perspective of Laura and also Diana, who was the sister of the woman that was murdered in the book. And Laura's perspective, I did kind of appreciate, but Diana's portion specifically, there were definitely good moments and passages and quotes from her section, but as a whole, I found myself just wanting to get back to Mahmoud and what he's dealing with and what his mental state was. I just didn't feel like I was getting enough of like a grander perspective from Diana's side that was you know, making the story for fully form more than it would have had her portions not been included. But that's just my opinion on that. Uh, I'm sure other people feel differently about it. So overall, as a whole, I did like this book. This one took me a bit longer than the others to get through. That could be because it was the second to last book that I read on the list of 13 books. And maybe I was just losing steam as far as reading literary fiction novels goes. However, as a whole, as for the story, it's sharing and making uh, very readable in that it's, it's this fictionalized version of this historical event that I knew next to nothing about. I only knew what happened from reading into it before I started reading the book. And so I'm glad that I read it to get that background or to just know a little bit about what happened. Uh, so overall, I'd have to say that the Booker Frog and I do recommend it. That was a really bad ribbit, but I can't do another one because then that'd be me giving it a double ribbit.
The Booker Frog, of course, rivets for any books that I would recommend that you read. I think that this book, despite it being about something that happened in the 50s, is still so, so relevant today and uh, heartbreaking to know that we're still dealing with very similar issues. But I think it's something that people should be aware of, people should be reading about and understanding and not, you know, just turning away from because it's hard to read. Not only that, but I think that Muhammad did such a good job of writing Mahmoud as a character and making it clear that he's not just like this totally perfect person that uh, people think committed this crime and also that he's not like this really terrible person that just happened to have not committed this crime, but that he's human. He's a real person and he dealt with things that are very difficult to deal with. And while he had a decent upbringing, he still had to live in a world that viewed him as lesser than other people in that same world. And he clearly had struggles that went along with that. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, I hope that you will subscribe and stick around and I will see you in the next one. Bye.